Do you want to know how to remove a radiator? It could be for something as simple as decorating or something to do with the radiator itself. Well, today on Fix It With Fowler, I'm going to show you how to remove this radiator, including a few special pointers with the boiler. The first thing we need to do is isolate the water supply that's going into the radiator. So on this end, we've got something called a TRV, a thermostatic radiator valve. And at the minute it's set on number two, and that's to suit the temperature of the room. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it all the way down until it's off. And that shuts this valve, which will allow us to open this end once we've done the lock shield end. Onto the lock shield, End. but before we start to alter that it's really important that you count the number of turns that we're going to close this by and the reason for that is it controls the flow and the balance of your central heating so what you're going to need is either a shifter or a pair of pliers to adjust this lock shield valve so at the lock shield valve if you take the cap off put that to one side and then if you get your shifter or your pliers and turn that in a clockwise direction. Now we just need to relieve a bit of pressure out the radiator so that when we undo the valves, we don't end up with it squirting everywhere. So just get some tissue placed below the bleed valve, give that a little turn, release some of that water out of the radiator. So the next thing we need to do is undo the valve at one end and release it from the radiator slightly to allow the water to escape. And I've got something special called a plumb tub, but you can use any sort of tub to place under the radiator to catch the water. So get your shifters or your spanner and gently release this valve. And what you'll find is that it will start to release the water from the radiator. So as the water drains out of the radiator, it's going to create a vacuum and to get rid of that vacuum get your bleed key put in the end of the radiator give that a turn and that will allow air in and allow the water to escape quicker next step is to protect your floor if you've got some plastic sheeting that's probably the best thing to use i've just got a couple of old towels because when you lift this radiator off it's probably going to come off at a bit of an angle and there's every chance any remaining residue or build up a grime will fall out onto your carpet. So now all I've got to do is try and prise these apart and lift the radiator off. So I'm probably just gonna, ah, yeah, right. So that should come off quite easy. that's the radiator back on the brackets and we just have to line it up with both the valves at each end and now we can just tighten them up finger tight to ensure they line up and now we just need to nip up the ends and when we fill the radiator up we can just check that we've not got any leaks at the lock shield end you now need to open that to the same amount of turns as you closed it before to ensure that the heating system remains balanced. Now open the thermostatic valve all the way and now you can hear the radiator filling up and the air being forced out. So as the radiator is filling up with water, it's forcing the air out, make sure you're ready with some tissue and your radiator key to shut the valve as soon as water starts to come out. Before you can check your radiator and your heating is working properly, then you may have to put some extra pressure back into your boiler to replace the water that you've just took out. So I've got a video on that, that's up on the screen. There's a link in the top corner. Click on that and that'll show you how to repressurize your boiler. Real straightforward job. So I hope you liked the video. Hope you found it useful. Don't forget, I've got loads more plumbing, heating, electrics, you name it, on the channel. So don't forget, give the video a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, and I'll see you soon.